Hi, welcome back to Concierge CPA. I am Juliette, a CPA here to help you make sense of accounting from the basics to the stuff that usually makes people panic in a way that actually feels doable, maybe even enjoyable. Today we are talking about why these two little words, debits and credits, confuse so many smart people and how to finally get them right with clear examples and practical tips to help it finally click. And I promise, once it clicks, you won't forget it. It's that kind of aha moment that makes the rest of accounting feel way easier. It definitely did for me. Here's why debits and credits feel so impossible. First, the words themselves are misleading. In everyday life, a debit usually means money leaving your account. And a credit means money coming in. So when accounting flips that logic, it feels like nonsense. Second, the rules are often memorized without context. Most people try to learn a bunch of left and right, up and down rules instead of understanding what's really happening in the transaction. But that doesn't work for everyone. And even if it does, it's not sustainable when things get more complicated. To learn it, you have to go deeper and think about the financial impact of the transaction. Once you understand what's really happening, the story behind the journal entry, it all starts to make a lot more sense. So let's do that right now. The first thing you need to learn and truly understand is the accounting equation, because it's not just about left and right, it's about balance. At the heart of accounting is this basic equation. And if you want to learn accounting, you have to know this. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. This is the foundation. Every journal entry is built to keep this equation balanced. When your business buys something, sells something, pays a bill, takes out a loan, the accounting system has one job. Make sure both sides of this equation still equal each other. To maintain that balance, accounting uses a system called double entry accounting. That means that every transaction affects at least two accounts. And one account gets a debit, the other account gets a credit. There are no exceptions to this. It's how the balance is always maintained. So instead of thinking of debits and credits as a bunch of arbitrary rules, Think of them as the tools we use to protect that balance. So let's move on. Every single account in your chart of accounts, cash, inventory, accounts receivable, revenue, expenses, payables, equity, and so on, all of them fall under one of the three main categories in the accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. But to make things easier to visualize, we often expand this equation by breaking equity into more specific parts. All of your accounts fall into one of six account groupings, assets, liabilities, owner's equity, revenue, expenses, and dividends. So when we stretch the accounting equation out to show how these pieces connect, it looks like this. Assets equals liabilities plus equity plus revenue minus expenses minus dividends. Revenue increases equity, expenses and dividends reduce it. But at the end of the day, all of it flows into owner's equity. And the goal is still to keep that equation balanced. When a business event happens, a sale, a payment, an expense, it needs to be recorded in the accounting system. That's what a journal entry is for. It's how we capture what happened. And every journal entry includes a debit and a credit. Always. Before we even think about debits and credits, your first job is to figure out which accounts are affected. That's where the understanding begins. When you pause and ask, what just happened? What accounts are changing? And how does this impact the financial position of the business? Once you can answer that, the rest, including the debits and the credits, gets a whole lot easier. Now that you understand the accounting equation and how every account fits into it, let's talk about what debits and credits actually do and why this system even exists. In accounting, debits and credits are how we increase or decrease an account balance. 
and whether we debit or credit the account depends on the type of account we are affecting. Or you can think of it as which side of the accounting equation the account is on. That's why you can't just memorize left side, right side and call it a day. You have to understand how each account behaves inside the accounting equation. Let me show you a simple visual to help it all click. This is the book I used a long time ago in my very first college accounting class, Accounting 101. I still have it. And on page 60, I had this diagram highlighted the accounting equation with debits and credits. I remember staring at it for days until I had it permanently imprinted in my brain. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. This visual is crucial. It shows the accounting equation with the words debit and credit under each category and the plus and minus signs that tell you whether a debit or credit will increase or decrease the account. Notice that the position of the debit and credit doesn't change. A debit is always on the left and the credit is always on the right. But notice the plus and minus signs below the words debit and credit. It changes depending on which side of the accounting equation the account category is on. Debits increase assets that are on the left, but once you move to the right side of the equation, credits increase liabilities and equity. Debits decrease the accounts on this side. It is the opposite. So if you are increasing an asset, you debit it. If you're increasing a liability or equity, you credit it. That's the logic behind every journal entry. Every time you record a transaction, you are either increasing or decreasing one or more accounts. And you're using debits and credits to do it in a way that keeps the accounting equation in balance. Now, before we jump into real life examples, we need to expand the accounting equation a little further. Because in real life, businesses don't just sit on assets and liabilities. They earn the revenue, they pay expenses. And if they're lucky, they might even take home some profits. So let's break that down. The original equation you learned was assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. But in practice, owner's equity changes based on three main things. Revenue increases equity, expenses decrease equity, dividends or owner's draws also decrease equity. Assets equals liabilities plus equity plus revenue minus expenses minus dividends. This is called the expanded accounting equation and it shows you how everything flows through equity. That's why we say revenue, expenses, and dividends are part of the equity family because they directly impact the value the owner has in the business. To make the expanded accounting equation line up properly with how debits and credits affect each account, we do a little algebra and we shift expenses and dividends over to the left side, even though they technically belong to equity, so that the plus minus logic stays consistent. Left side equals increase with debits. Right side equals increase with credits. This structure makes debit credit rules way easier to remember. So we move dividends and expenses over to the left and we have the final expanded accounting equation. Dividends plus expenses plus assets equals liabilities plus equity plus revenue. So when you're working with any of these six account types, the rule is consistent. If it's on the left side of this expanded equation, you increase it with a debit. If it's on the right side, you increase it with a credit. And just like before, every journal entry is built to keep this equation balanced. One debit, one credit, always. Let's look at four examples. Example one, paying rent with cash. Let's say your business pays $1,200 for rent. In this scenario, the rent expense goes up. And since expenses are increased with a debit, we debit rent expense. Cash goes out, so cash goes down. And since assets decrease with a credit, we credit cash. Here you are spending cash to pay for rent. So cash, an asset goes down and expenses go up. One debit, one credit. The equation stays balanced. Example number two. 
earning revenue on account. Let's say you invoice a client $2,000 for work performed, but haven't been paid yet. Your account's receivable goes up. And since assets increase with the debit, we debit accounts receivable. Service revenue goes up. And since revenue increases with the credit, we credit service revenue. In this scenario, you've earned revenue. So revenue increases. That gets credited. You're also owed money from the customer, which increases your receivables. And that gets debited. The equation balances perfectly. Example number three, buying equipment with a loan. Let's say you buy a $5,000 piece of equipment and finance it 100% with a loan. Your equipment goes up, and since assets increase with a debit, we debit equipment. Notes payable goes up, and since liabilities increase with a credit, we credit notes payable. In this scenario, you are adding to your assets with the equipment purchase, a debit. At the same time, you now owe money to a lender. Liability goes up, a credit, and the accounting equation still remains in balance. Example number four, owner contributes cash to the business. Let's say the business owner invests $10,000 of personal funds into the company. Cash goes up, and since assets increase with the debit, we debit cash. Owner's equity, a capital account, goes up. And since equity increases with a credit, we credit owner's equity. In this scenario, the business receives cash. Assets go up, a debit. At the same time, the owner's stake in the business increases. Equity goes up, a credit. As always, one debit and one credit keeping the equation balanced. And that's all. I hope the concept of debits and credits finally clicked for you and you are ready to learn more exciting accounting topics. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anyone who might find it helpful, subscribe to the channel, and let me know your thoughts and topic requests in the comments below. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.